Good morning, everyone. My name is Hannah Facey, and I'm a master's student at the University of Guelph. And today I'll be presenting my research on the complete replacement of soybean meal with black soldier fly larvae meal in broiler feeding programs. Poultry products, including broiler meat, are one of the largest and fastest growing animal agriculture industries in the world, and is continuously growing each year due to increased wealth and population growth. And with an ever-growing industry, we need to ensure that the feed and the ingredients comprising the feed can keep up with broiler demand and be versatile enough to withstand an evolving social, environmental, and economic climate. One big change the broiler industry is facing is increasing restrictions on antibiotic use. The use of category one and two antibiotics in the poultry industry have already been banned in Canada, while category three antibiotics is currently under review with the intention of also being banned. Therefore, it's important to explore possible alternatives to antibiotic use to ensure that bird health and performance don't suffer. Additionally, traditional feed ingredients, particularly those most essential in broiler diets, providing energy and protein, such as soybean meal, come with some important environmental concerns, such as requiring large amounts of land for production, high irrigation requirements, and fertilizers have been known to leach into waterways, causing eutrophication. Given the intensifying need for sustainable agriculture, it's also worth exploring more sustainable feed alternatives. The alternative that I'm interested in is black soldier fly larvae meal. Nutritionally speaking, black soldier fly meal could be an ideal alternative as its nutritional composition makes it suitable as part of a balanced diet, according to many different strain specific production guidelines. Compared to soybean meal, it has a higher food protein content, higher energy or AME value, uh, despite being defatted, as there is some residual fat um, adding to the energy content, as well as a higher phosphorus content, which is considered to be 100% available as insects do not have phytate phosphorus. These three nutrients are important as they often drive prices in feed formulation. However, black soldier fly meal is lower in some key digestible amino acids, such as lysine, um, methionine, and cysteine. Black soldier fly meal does also contain more fiber because most of the nitrogen and crude protein is bound by chitin, which is representative of the fiber content. Chitin is an indigestible fiber found in the exoskeleton of black soldier flies, which has some interesting functional benefits supported by high amounts of medium chain fatty acids, such as lauric and mystric acid. It's thought that these substances act similar to prebiotic and have some antimicrobial properties, which leads to improved gut health and immunity and could help reduce the need for antibiotics in the poultry industry. However, in high amounts, it's thought that chitin causes digestibility issues in broilers, which could hinder growth performance. Additionally, black soldier flies can be produced very sustainably, requiring little space and low inputs. They have a high stocking density, and in Canada, biomass and plant waste have been approved as a rearing substrate for black soldier flies produced as livestock feed. Therefore, the larvae can consume waste products from sources such as grocery stores, restaurants, or even the beer and wine industry, reducing food waste while converting it into a high-quality protein source. The main issue with black soldier fly meal and broiler diets is that various different levels of growth depression is seen, particularly when black soldier fly meal is fed in higher amounts. However, the results vary significantly. Some research has seen positive performance with as high as 100% inclusion, such as the study done here by Wallace et al., uh, whereas other research has seen poor performance with as low as 10 to 15% inclusion, such as the Debu et al. paper. Therefore, it's important that we now study in depth where the growth depression is occurring and then further examine what's going on metabolically and physiologically at this point to try to find solutions to the impaired performance seen in so many performance trials. So that leads me to my objective, which is to examine the influence of partial to complete replacement of soybean meal with black soldier fly larvae meal and broiler feeding programs on growth performance. And my hypothesis is that broilers will experience a quadratic effect on growth performance where lower levels of black soldier fly larvae meal will promote growth similar to an AGP diet and where high levels of black soldier fly meal will depress growth performance. So I conducted this study at the Arkell Research Facility in Guelph, Ontario over 49 days and used four identical rooms within one of their barns. There was 48 pens in total, and we put 24 birds in each pen, which gave us 1,152 chicks at the beginning of the trial. The chicks were all male raw seven weight broilers and were allocated to each pen by hatch weight. The pens were randomly assigned one of six diets in a completely randomized block design. And the diets were all isonitrogenous with increasing levels of black soldier fly meal that replaced the soybean meal content. So diet A was the control diet containing 0% black soldier fly meal and no uh, growth promoters or antibiotics. 
and diets B, C, D, and E were the basic control diets plus 12.5%, 25%, 50%, and 100% black soldier fly meal respectively. And then diet F was our, was our positive control diet, which was identical to diet A, but with a growth promoter BMD and a coccidiostat Montevan. Each diet was formulated for a starter, grower, and finisher phase to meet the nutrient specifications for this strain. And we collected performance data, including body weights and feed intake at day 10, 24, and 49, being the end of each phase. Um, and then we were also, we also collected mortality throughout the trial, and then we're able to calculate body weight gain and the corrected feed conversion ratio. This data was analyzed using the Proclimix procedure in the SAS program, and Tukey Kramer was used to compare differences among the least squared means, and co contrast statements were used to identify linear and quadratic trends. As an extension of this research, we also sampled birds on day 24 and 49 with the hopes to explore the metabolic and physiological aspects of this research. However, today I'll only be discussing the performance data. So here are the diet composition tables for each of the three phases. And as you can see here, black soldier fly meal was added at increasing levels um, while replacing the soybean meal content. And soy oil was used uh, in the control diets, whereas black soldier fly larvae oil was used in the black soldier fly meal diets. Each diet met or exceeded the nutrient requirements according to the Avigen production guidelines. And every diet has the same amount of energy, protein, and other essential nutrients so that every bird was getting the same amount of nutrients. You can also see the price differences between the control diet and the black soldier fly meal diet. There is a significant difference in price um, because black soldier fly meal is currently priced very high, making it not economically uh, viable for producers at this time. However, I am planning on exploring uh, more regarding the use of as a value, value added feed ingredient or value added supplement. Here is the composition for the grower phase, and you can see that the requirements changed a little bit, but everything is met and everything is consistent between each diet treatment. And here's the composition for the finisher base. So onto the results and discussion. Um, here are the results for body weight, body weight gain, feed intake, and FCR during the starter phase. You can see here that diets D and E are, are already um, starting to have negative effects on body weight, body weight gain, and feed intake. However, what's interesting in this body weight result, and hence the body weight gain result as well, is that diets containing lower levels of black soldier fly meal, such as diets B and C, are actually statistically similar to diet F, which was the growth promoting diet, and therefore outperform diet A, the control, suggesting that lower levels of black soldier fly meal could actually have some sort of growth promoting effect similar to antibiotics. It's not clear yet why we saw that early growth promoting effect. Um, however, a smaller presence of chitin could be positively influencing gut health, but starts to cause digestibility issues in diets D and E. Here's the data for the grower phase, and you can see that the same trends continue to develop. Um, so we're seeing a bit more of that growth promoting effect in diets B and C for body weight and body weight gain. Um, however, it's not as clear as it was in the starter phase, and the rest of the data begins to follow a decreasing linear trend as the level of black soldier fly meal increases. And this is the finisher phase. Uh, this also represents the overall results for body for the body weight data. And you can see that the early growth promoting effect evened out, and now diets B and C are statistically similar to diet A, whereas diet F is outperforming the rest. So this indicates that black soldier fly meal could be a valuable uh, and worthwhile addition in starter diets, but maybe not in grower and finisher diets. And lastly, uh, the overall results for body weight gain, feed intake, and FCR. These results have all developed into some pretty clear decreasing linear trends as the level of black soldier fly meal increases. Uh, the feed intake data corresponds to the body weight results and is likely a major factor in the reduced growth performance. However, that leaves us with the question of, well, why aren't the birds eating those diets with higher levels of black soldier fly meal? And one theory is that black soldier fly meal is a dark color, similar to coffee grounds. And the more black soldier fly meal that's added to the diets, the darker they become. So as chickens are highly visual animals, it's thought that the variation in color is causing a visual aversion, making the chicks not want to eat uh, the darker feed. And for FCR, there is some improvement in diets B and C, suggesting again that there could be some positive impacts on gut health from those lower levels of black soldier fly meal. This is some mortality data for the whole trial. Diets A, B, C, D, and F were pretty normal. 
Um, however, you can see diet E had a high mortality rate, which was partially due to the increased need for euthanasia. The main causes of mortality in diet E um, were birds that were euthanized due to lameness, leg problems, or for being a runt, compared to the main cause of mortality in the other treatments, which was labeled as found dead. You can see in the pictures I've included that the birds on diet E were in fact much smaller and more variable in size compared to the uh, chickens on diet F, and they had very patchy feathers. And this suggests that high levels of black soldier fly meal, particularly the complete replacement diet, is having some metabolic and physiological effects on the birds, and that further research is required to try to find some more answers for why the chickens responded this way. Some of the aspects I plan to explore further uh, as part of my thesis are the various organ weights, including small intestine, pancreas, liver, spleen, and more. Uh, the plasma amino acid profiles, the histomorphology of the small intestine, the short chain fatty acid profile of the cecal contents, and the measurement and ash content of the leg bones. So hopefully this will give us a better picture as to what's causing the birds to have impaired growth. So to conclude, the broilers in this trial did experience a depression in growth performance uh, when fed higher levels of black soldier fly meal, being the diet with 50% and 100% inclusion represented through reduced body weight and body weight gain, um, as well as reduced feed intake and worsened FCR. This result supported by the current price of black soldier fly products indicates that a major or full replacement of soybean meal with black soldier fly meal isn't yet viable. However, including black soldier fly meal in lower amounts, for example, uh, less than 25% could be a value added ingredient for the growth promoting uh, benefits uh, possibly influenced by chitin and those medium chain fatty acids. So here are my acknowledgements to my uh, lab mates, as well as the Arkell Research Station staff, and of course, my funding agencies. So I have some references listed, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. <laughs>